Chaga grows on birch trees. It can grow on others, but for the most part, chaga is just birch. Tell them what kind of medicine it does too, over. Well, on the back end of it, it has oxalate crystals in it, so heavy exposure to chaga uh, is bad for the liver. So you shouldn't take chaga every day. However, it is a super immune builder, and it is what we call an adaptogen. So chaga, this orange substance on the inside, is highly flammable. In fact, I've seen a guy cutting this with his chop saw to prepare it, and the sparks from the armature between the magnets and the wound armature on a saw oh, yeah. caught it on fire. Wow. Really? Yes. So I'm going to take a chunk of this. This is Dawn's Silky Saw, by the way. It's one of the best of the saws made. Get a chunk of this and get some powder Part in of there. my bushcrafting. <laughs> and show you guys just how fast it takes a spark. That's about all it takes. You see all these embers burning in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's quick. Yeah, it's very You should have quick. used that last night. Chaga is very volatile. What we're talking about here is an ember. We're not actually talking about fire. And mm -hmm. the whole issue of this is mushrooms and how traditional cultures around the world, frontiersmen that founded this country and moved across it, how people really utilized fire. And fire in this form, the form of the ember, is how it was transported. A lot of people are under the notion that frontiersmen, traditional cultures could haphazardly go anywhere in the world and start a fire with a bow drill, with a hand drill. And these are all skills that we know and learn, and they're good to know and learn, but we didn't just run everywhere and make fire. Fire was transported. Uh, on this papers that I'm going to have you pass out, there's two, one for each scout, but on here is a fire horn, and this is a traditional fire horn from the Piconi who carried fire, and most traditional cultures didn't just go make fire, they carried it. So we're talking about the same fire for hundreds and hundreds of generations. Mm -hmm. because they would take an ember from each fire before it went out and one person was chosen to do that and then they would run ahead of the nomadic tribes and get the fire going and of course they kept fire permanently frontiersmen would also use buffalo horn they would also use what's called fire bundles to carry it an interesting part is you want me to press this out yes two to each. An interesting part, who here has heard of the Iceman? Anybody? Not bad. So Otzi was an Iceman found in the Alps. 5,000 year old, perfectly frozen human being. And on him he had two mushrooms. One of the mushrooms that he had was the horse hoof fungus which I'm going to pass around for everyone to look at. These around here grow on beech trees. Uh -huh. They prefer birch. We have a lot of beech here, which is a smooth barked gray tree. And when you take this fungus dry, it will carry a tinder for hours. So if you're stranded somewhere and you have to leave your fire unattended, if it goes out, you're in trouble. All you have to do is put an ember in that and it will burn while you're doing your task. And this is how people would travel. They would start an ember in this fungus and this will burn for hours. I've had some burn for two. I've had some burn. I think the longest we got was about seven hours. How See, common is that? This is extremely common in our area. Okay. Usually on beech trees and when you find it, It'll be knobbed all over, and it just tops. How do you tell trees? Huh? How do you tell trees? Of course. Beech tree? Uh, a beech them. tree will be a smooth bark. I'll show you a beech tree. Yeah, very good. They're 
different you're, ways you can learn. The, if you're with the troop for very long, I'll show you a beach tree. Mm -hmm. oh, can I actually use this one? <laughs> yes, that's what it is for. They're pretty common. Not here, though. So, one other thing that I wanted to show you guys real quick, well, before I get to that, I would like... This paper is... Oh. <laughs> You're going to hand it to me. <laughs> this is in our area. I would like everyone to pass that around and smell it. There's nothing in this. What's it smell like? Cedar. Cedar. Right here we have some resin. And if you can imagine this on a tree, it's on the tree like this and the branch is already broken. So what happens on red pine when a branch breaks is the resin in the pine runs down and protects the tree. It kind of coagulates there and it protects the tree from infestations of, of bacteria or insects and it creates this <laughs> resin that it is extremely volatile. So we call this fat wood and what you're smelling in the jar wherever it went is fat wood. And it smells like turpentine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Pinus resinosum. And resinosum is what we're talking about. This is a coin that I cut off of it. And you can feel that it's it's really sticky. Yeah, and you yeah. can almost see through it in the sun. Yeah. Why does that look pink? Why does it look it's pink? the red pine. Oh. It's the red pine. And so when you're dealing with wet conditions, super wet conditions. Having fat wood around is great. So the one point that I wanted to make is when this is on the tree like this and you break the branch off, you see this oozy substance, you give it a whiff, you can smell the turpentine, you know it's there. This branch isn't necessarily any good. It's been raining for days. Only this section right here is good. You can see I cut out down to where it starts to turn red. All this wood here will put your fire out. So you would have to shave that off in order to try to start a fire. Once you get that shaved off, you've got kindling to get your fire going. Yeah, I know the smell of resin all too well. <coughs> Orchestra, we use resin for the violins. Oh, yes, That's right. Oh, yeah. I used to play the violin, so. The interesting part is the sawdust mm -hmm. from cutting these coins yeah, cool. will take yeah. a spark. It doesn't take a spark as easily as chaga, but it definitely takes a spark. Oops, sorry, honey. And it will hold an ember long enough for you to put it into a bundle and get it going. You have to start a fire. That's what they were trying last night, is they were trying to flint and steel. Yeah. Ah, that is another thing that I want to address. Which they didn't, they weren't successful because it's hard to do. It really is hard to do. It's good to have this skill, but this isn't something I do. It's really not. Don and I use a torch to start our fire we get a little pyramid built up and we take a torch and we start it now we've been in areas where we've got a torch and we have dry tinder because we bring it in a dry box we have birch bark we have all these volatile materials that make really excellent tenders and we still struggle to get a fire going every now and then but it's because everything's wet everything's damp and even when you bring out something dry it will absorb the humidity around it it's going to, it's dry, it automatically does. It's like putting a dry paper towel on a damp counter. Automatically it's wet. So starting a fire isn't necessarily easy and that is another reason that traditional cultures, you can see all the little embers starting in there. You see the you can specks. I don't think any of them go took. Over, go over here. I was actually going to have one of the scouts do this. There's one smoking. Last night in the kitchen, perfect. In Got my kitchen. <laughs> Once again, when you're not in uh, perfect conditions, fire making is not easy. No. Not easy at all. So it's important to know where to get tinder, like fat wood. On the paper that I gave you guys, there is a series of plants. And all of those plants make excellent tinder, specifically stinging nettle and burdock. If you pick them green on a wet day and you hang them out to dry, 
for a little over two hours Fine. and then crumble them up, you can make a fire bundle. I can finally get revenge on those little suckers. <laughs> you can make a fire bundle that will take an ember. Yep. Green plants that will take an ember. And then a very cool one that I wanted to show you guys club is club moss. This now, girl is smart. In <laughs> photography, oh. uh, you've probably seen it in the movies where a guy has his head droped under a, a silk cloth and he has this big kind of screen in front of him and then he'd tell everyone don't move and then you'd see this big flash well the pollen from club moss and here's the flower you can see what the flower would look like that's the only part that you're using you see the picture on the paper the pollen will flash See if I can get some pollen out here. Kind of hard to get out. There we go. There's some pollen. Uh, does Dawn have a lighter? Dawn does not have a lighter. Does anybody have a lighter? Mm. What's this? We have the huge lighter. There we go. Yeah, we got the huge. We got, we got some scouts here. <laughs> oh, you okay? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I do. I, 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 I don't know. He keeps moving sideways. His back keeps com coming to him. Yeah, why'd you move? Because it's good. Actually, no. Picture. It was burning before it touched me. Now, if I'd have had it in my hand, it would have been really bad. And yeah, that was <laughs> one of the scouts, I'm sure. But flash powder is oh. what we call it. But all it is is pollen, where, and it's from a. It grows everywhere. What a lot of people think it is, is baby cedar. You're walking take, take along, look at it and you, you see it blanketed, it looks like boy, baby cedar that, trees. Boy, yeah. Yeah. But then when you see the flower head, which resembles this, you know right away it's not cedar. And the flower head is what contains the pollen. How tall is it? Usually 6 to 12 inches? Yeah, I've never yeah. seen it much over 12 oh, inches. Yeah. It just kind of, it just kind of yeah. blankets the ground yeah, like this. It matched the ground. I think I've seen it. What if you were to mix it with the other fire starters, like the uh, sawdust or the... Um... I've never tried it, but I would imagine that it would certainly help. Um, a lot of times, well, there was, we had a guy in the troop one time that mixed gunpowder with sawdust. <laughs> and oh. that was his fire starter. It was not something I, I recommend, <laughs> but he did it. He, he did it and so experiments like that are great and kind of yeah, a big part of kids. <laughs> so now we have fire that can be transported. So Utsi, Utsi, the Iceman had two mushrooms on him. But an interesting thing that just was recently uncovered was he had birch bark. And he had birch bark shaped like a can. And then inside this birch bark, they found maple leaves. He was 11,000 foot in the Alps. So they had this birch bark can and they found remnants of maple leaves. And one guy suggested that it was possible he had put an ember in the maple leaves. And a lot of people argued this point that it couldn't be done. So recently, a couple of people made this container out of birch bark, which is tinder. We all know that. You guys have learned about birch bark, right? And how this very fine stuff right here, if you peel it, and I've got some land right there that I already peeled off of this, but and you guys can look at that too. This fine stuff right here will catch a spark it's waterproof to an extent a lot of times you find it in the woods like this and it looks like the tree is still intact and when you grab it the tree's just gone only the bark is left well Otsi had this container shaped like this they found the remnants of the leaves a guy remakes it then they take green oak leaves and they wrap an ember in it and they filled this and what they discovered was he had everything he needed to make the fire. He had his tinder and his ember. So around those leaves was pieces of kindling. Now at 11,000 feet, there's not much to burn. I've been at 11,000 feet, it's serious. You're 
not as strong as you think you are when you're at 11,000 feet. You can't make it from here to the tent at a dead run like you think you can at 11,000 feet. And there's really not much to burn. Most of the trees that are around the 9,000 to 10,000 foot mark, most of them are just hanging off of boulder faces and they're not very big. Anyway, Utsi had two mushrooms on him. One of them was this one right here for carrying an ember. Then he had a backup plan in a birch ember bundle. And then the other one, of course, was medicinal. He had little patties of the birch polypore on a necklace. And it was suggested that he had that on him for parasites because it'll cleanse your body of parasites. It's an immune builder. And they checked and indeed he had parasites. So he was taking medicine and climbing the mountain. We don't know how he ended up frozen up there. Maybe his fire bundles didn't work. <laughs> possible it could have gone out. It's possible it could have gone out. The issue with this one that Don and I have noticed playing with it for the last few years, you can see it's still smoking, is that if you don't mind it, it will go out. We've left it for two hours on a table, came back and it's burning, and we've left it for two hours on a table, came back and it's gone. And I think the biggest issue is finding it at the right stage on the tree, whether it's got moisture in it because it's still fresh, or whether it's, as these get older, this will turn brown. And when you pull it off the tree, it'll be kind of brown rust colored and you can just crush it with your hand. That obviously isn't gonna hold an ember. And then if you get it when it's pure white and the underneath of this is a cream white, you can feel the moisture in it. It's still growing, it's still alive. So when you harvest these, make sure that you get one that's lightweight, that's dry and not rotted, and it'll hold the ember. Does anyone have any questions about birch, mushrooms, traveling, any of that? Anybody want a souvenir, like a coin? <laughs> All right. Well, I will let you guys pass that around and take a coin, and there's even some fat wood you guys can have in this basket. You can tear off pieces of birch bark if you like. And aside from what oh, I've sorry, caught honey. fire, okay. I'm even They're willing coming. to coming let you guys keep the horse of fungus. You know, I would like to have one, and then I'll go out and collect some more and pass them out to the troop. That'd be awesome. Well, guys, that's all I really got. Thank you. I'll show you guys yeah. Yeah. a beech tree, but around here we got cottonwood and black wood burner in the 70s. Everybody say hi to the camera. Hi. Hi. Say bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.